Hi, Nicola Egerty. How are you? Hello, Connor Ryan. I'm great. Good. How are you? <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to Let's Talk Singing. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. And as we were just talking about there, I think what we're going to speak about today is going to be very important for and uh, not just uh, professional singers, but also hobbyists and people that are even teachers, anyone who uses their voice, I guess that's going to be something that's going to be really cool today. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to, I was thinking of like, I don't know, I was thinking of going, uh, hi, welcome to Let's Talk Singing and then playing like a, a little jingle, but I have no jingle. <laughs> oh, you could have sang one. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you want to make one? If you and Joe make a, a jingle, I'll play it every every week. We should. Joe's great at making jingles, so we probably should. <laughs> uh, then yeah. get I on to him. I expect <laughs> one morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, excellent, Nick. So, um, just for anyone now that's kind of watching, um, we know each other a long time. Um, well, a long time in the sense of like a couple of years. We lived together in Dublin in a big jazz mansion. Um, when mm -hmm. I was in college and you were uh, graduated from New Park in Dublin. Yeah, um, it was about five years ago. Five years, five, definitely yeah, five yeah. years ago, because I'm mean, here in Crazy. Germany four years, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Mad. that's nuts. Nuts. Mad. Anyway, yeah. so look, I was thinking, yeah, if you want to just do like a small introduction of what you do, where you came from in a sense of like your kind of journey in music, where how you landed in the position you're in now, and yeah, if you want to just let us know. Sure. Uh, well, my name is Nicola Hegarty and I've been a singer my entire life. Um, probably just from my dad. He was a, a fantastic musician in all the show bands and back in the Johnny Cash days and all of that. Uh, so yeah, just the interest kind of developed from there. And I decided that I wanted to um, sing professionally for forever so I decided to, to study music and I went to do you know the rock jam or not rock jam sorry the rock college in Ballyfermot I do yeah. yeah I went there for two years so I was 17 years old straight out of school didn't know where to go rocker that kind of thing so I went there for two fantastic years and that really made me want to get a degree in music and just to be able to read and write music and um, all that kind of stuff. So went to New Park and um, yeah, studied jazz for four years. And um, yeah, that was that really, I suppose. I've been in numerous uh, bands. I was in Creamy Goodness for, mm. God, I'd say about a decade from the age of 17 up to 26, 27. And that was like my first kind of professional band. Mm. I was in, there's like about 11 of us in it at one point. <laughs> and we did the Cork Jazz Festival and um, supported Macy O. Parker at that. He was James Brown's uh, trumpet player. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and just deadly little gigs with them mm. kind of opened my eyes up to uh, the world of gigging and mm. being able to be disciplined as a backing singer and to just have all your your music pieces ready, all your lyrics learned, uh, your vocal stamina, being able to, you know, stay up late and mm -hmm. get up early and all this kind of stuff. And where do you put your dinner in and all, all this kind of stuff. Loads of different things. The organization uh, of it all. Um, yeah, and then when I got into New Park then, it was all jazz, uh, kind of, I left the metal behind the <laughs> heavy metal and rock kind of music for four years anyway and um yeah just threw myself into jazz and ella fitzgerald and performed in the concert hall doing ella fitzgerald's tribute and a uh, totally different style of music to soul and funk mm. what i had been doing before and then when i left new park uh, i kind of delved into the land of cover bands um, and that was a different style again. So it was like pop uh, from the 80s, 90s, 2000s. Um, and that was full on gigging, you know, weekend after weekend and uh, weddings, events, um, just kind of really singing your head off. <laughs> mm. I did that for a good few years. 
um, and then just had an interest in vocal coaching as well. Um, I love teaching, I love singing, I'm obsessed with the anatomy of the voice and how it works um, and what can happen to it and things go wrong and how you fix it and um, yeah, all of that. So I, I studied speech and language then in um, Portobello. Mm. So it's just a short course, like a crash term course on speech and language therapy. Um, so I became a speech and language therapist assistant when I finished that and ended up working in a hospital. So at this point, uh, the gigs were kind of less, uh, left the cover bands uh, to really focus on teaching and to help people with focal disorders and, and how to rehabilitate them. Hmm. So I was working with patients, uh, like stroke patients, uh, patients with uh, neurological disorders that were in car crashes and uh, lost the use of their voice. Um, yeah, that kind of thing. So it was really interesting, absolutely obsessed with it. Um, so yeah, since then I've been going to different types of um, workshops in Trinity College, uh, doing anatomy and voice rehabilitation and Queen's University as well, doing the same thing. So um, yeah, right now it's just kind of um, the link between speech and language therapists and singers mm. um, is what I'm trying to bring together. Mm. So if you have a, a vocal problem with your voice, you would naturally go to your doctor or GP. Um, they will refer you to an ear, nose and throat specialist and you get the scope done, blah, blah, blah. I'll talk about this later but they will send you to a speech and language therapist and the speech and language therapists, even though they're, they're brilliant um, in kind of rehabilitating your voice back to normal kind of thing, they're not singers and singers are not doctors. Um, and so there's kind of this missing link and um, like, where do I go? I have to stop working. Um, just huge big ball of stress and it kind of escalates and more problems then and um, so like a footballer if they hurt their leg they're gone for the season uh, get some physio and then they're back in again and everyone wishes them well and mm. all this kind of stuff but a singer it's like oh they're after damaging their voice and I don't want to work with them like you know uh, damaged goods type thing so yeah I, we're trying to uh work together myself and um, the coordinator of the master's speech and language program in Trinity College. Um, so we're working together on that and trying to help each other on what we each need cool. to develop a master's course uh, in wow. voice rehabilitation. Yeah. So it's going pretty well it's in the early <laughs> stages, but they're doing great things over there. Yeah. So that, that's really where I'm at. Uh, I'm kind of managing to cover bands I got back into it uh, <laughs> with Joe, my beautiful uh, boyfriend, Joe. And so we're in one called Speaker Love, uh, which is a kind of disco, 70s disco five piece band. And then the other one is Swing Society, which can go up to a nine piece and um, kind of swing and soul mm. band, which is where the jazz comes in. Mm. And then we have a duo together. Uh, Joe and Nick so that's actually busier than the other bands to be honest with you so we're out the door of that so <laughs> and Joe so that's and... where I'm at yeah and so the Joe and Nick thing is is um uh has been, has been great because you've been doing some live gigs every Friday right that's right uh we didn't plan on doing that really um you know for so long uh but people were just kind of they felt normal at home like listening to the to live music and the sure. crack and mm. you know but it's great like if it if it brings people joy and a bit of normality then we're happy to do that you know? yeah 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 Excellent. Good and point. so <laughs> that's great let's i just want to go back and a couple of things that you said just so that um just before yeah. we move on to some of the more technical questions you know um yes so you were i'm going right back yeah so what you said so creamy goodness like you can go and you can watch a video of creamy goodness right online on youtube and stuff i think you showed me a couple of those and they oh, right they're they're excellent yeah, they're so good so, yeah. you know great oh, music great bands 
uh, or great musicians as well. But so you were, you had, so your your kind of your history in being kind of a metal and a rocker and stuff, and then you were in this <laughs> kind of soul funk band, right? Creamy Goodness was kind of soul funk, or okay. yeah. And creamy, then you were creamy vibes. Yeah, creamy vibes, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, and then you were you were back in singing for that, right? I was what? You were back in. You were singing back in yeah. for for creamy yeah, goodness. I, yeah, I was mainly uh, mm. backing vocalist. Yeah, mm. a few leads now and again, but if yeah. you're lucky. Yeah, and so when did you get the? When did you get that little push to um to get out front? When were you kind of? When did you front your own band? When was your first? band that you you fronted um well it was probably in new park when mm-hmm. i did um kind of different trios and duos um and yeah i would have been quite shy like back mm-hmm. in the day um and also other artists maybe that i've worked with before like the majority of them were kind of more confident than me so they kind of okay. get the limelight type thing and i'd be happy to stay in the back but I really sure. wanted to be out front. Mm. Um, so that, that just took a lot of time and experience over the years. But yeah, it was probably um, in New Park mm. that that happened. And the, and the switch then between doing kind of that, so you started with the rock kind of music that you really liked to listen to and sing, and then you were yeah. doing that kind of solely background stuff, and then you went to this jazz stuff. And that, that progression, what, what, were you, what did you find most interesting or what was, what was something that you... I don't know that what made you firstly think that okay yeah i want to go into new park and sing ella you know or want to learn yeah. how to solo and stuff yeah uh well i i just learned uh well i loved every well most styles of music i wasn't really a country fan back in the day mm. i am now yeah but uh, <laughs> yeah like i suppose it comes from being a teenager and uh just being kind of like you know emotional and like rebellious mm. and you like, start listening to uh it was like pantera metallica uh, I love Tool, Pearl Jam, mm. Alice in Chains, all of those. And the vocals in them, if you notice, all of those bands are quite sing- singy. They're not like death metal or they're like screaming. They're kind of um, it, nice melodic lines, yeah. but with cool rhythmic changes and in instruments and style, mm. their clothes, everything. I just loved it. Um, so that, and but I didn't have the confidence actually to be a, an, a like a lead singer of a metal rock band, you know? My voice was tight, quite um, delicate and uh, airy, fairy, you know, very soft. Um, so, yeah, there was that. And then um, I suppose the transition, I actually went into classical singing uh, in Walton's and I was doing grade five. Mm. And one of the, my singing teachers said, um, I think jazz would suit you more. Mm. So I was like, jazz, she's like, I know a bit of jazz, but like, I, I wouldn't think of singing it, you know? So um, she was like, yeah, I think you should audition. So I auditioned and ended up getting it. And um, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, you know, but uh, I absolutely fell in love with it. And um, just the style of it, like, mm. I, I also loved um, back in the day, like Mariah Carey, uh, Barbara Streisand, Whitney Houston, Celine Dion. Mm. for different reasons mm. so like mariah carey for her technique um and like vocal abilities um and barbara streisand for the emotion that she put in uh to all of her songs she really you really felt what she meant you know um and then whitney houston just for projection really and uh, just all that kind of stuff tied into everything with the jazz you're able to free seeing you could scat mm. over different scales and then um i took the rhythm of metal and rock and all of that and just meshed it all together <laughs> here i am <laughs> nice yeah yeah but, <laughs> yeah and so when you and then you were talking you were talking a bit then about when you out out of new park you you kind of jumped not jumped but you found yourself in the world of of cover bands right so I'm yes. just, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of putting this all together, you know, coming from the rock kind of love into the the solely music, singing background into the jazz, and then finding yourself yeah. in this place where you're you're covering a plethora of like all of this different, like an eclectic, you know, mix of music that you have to have some 
real understanding and knowledge and control over your instrument that you can flick in between different styles here and there and um how did you find like oh, actually maybe how we can start into that is where where do you put your um where does your voice naturally lie um i suppose when i was younger it was quite high um because i didn't like I hadn't explored my range and mm. I didn't know my voice. Uh, now that I know my voice, it's kind of um, it's it's kind of like I don't know. It's I can sing loads of different styles and different ranges and things. Mm. But I, I suppose mid range would be comfortable mm. for me. Like, uh, but I do like a task mm. and I like <laughs> kind of going to places I wouldn't usually uh, go to. You know. But yeah, I do um, know. I remember weeks and weeks in that house when you were trying to get that whistle tone right. Walking around the house going... <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I know, yeah. Yeah, things like that, you know. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, so the cover yeah. bandy thing. Mm. Uh, I suppose when I left New Park, I got a phone call from uh, Neil Dorrington. Do you know him? I yeah, know, based there. Mm-hmm. And um, he just messaged me saying that, uh, or called me, saying that he knew of a cover band uh, that were just starting up and they wanted to audition singers. Mm. So I kind of swore to myself I would never be in a cover band and all of that. Um, But I went for the audition and ended up getting it, but I I didn't really know how to be a front person. I was kind Mm. of launched into it. Mm. So like with jazz singing, you're quite static Mm. and you're kind of just, you don't really move, you don't over exaggerate your voice you don't push you don't project you don't do anything like that and um, so it's just quite nice soft intricate technical type of singing but with cover bands uh it's just kind of hit after hit after hit after hit yeah. and you're expected to just keep snowballing into these songs and jump and dance and dress like a lunatic and all of these things and, and shout and get the crowd. crowd yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, and it's also madness. talking in between. So you're doing singing these mad numbers, and then you're talking in yeah. between. Yeah, it's and, crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and how did you? So I mean, you were in the cover band. Uh, I remember that cover band. You were you were gigging. Yeah, basically every weekend, like myself. No, I was. Yeah, every yeah. weekend, uh, weddings, yeah, pubs, exactly. everywhere. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's a mad life, and I mean, the thing is, like you said, yeah. like when you come out of when you come out of. Uh, out of college like a jazz college and kind of swear that you're not going to get into the cover band kind of stuff but yeah definitely it's 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 very difficult when you see the the monetary value but also how much you learn i also felt that when i went i when i got into my first kind of wedding big cover band uh, yeah. the amount of things that you learn like you said like never really being a front person but then you're kind of thrown into the deep end and you kind of have to be this this cheerleader and also a, a singer that can do everything and a harmonizer mm-hmm. and a performer and yeah. you know it's it's really interesting and look natural <laughs> and look natural and look like you're having fun even though you do it twice every weekend for yeah god knows how long it is mad yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like that's the type of stuff you can only get from doing it mm. nobody can teach you that in mm. colleges they don't prepare you for that either right especially with the like the punters the drunk people yeah hanging out you grabbing your mic yeah, nicking your props like yeah. nobody tells you that stuff. Yeah, and also the changing rooms like oh. there isn't any. Right, that's true. Yeah, and you had loads of costume changes, didn't you? Loads of costume yeah. changes, and um, like yeah, it was just crazy. You'd be getting tra- changed in stock rooms, and uh, I remember getting changed in a bush outside <laughs> of the venue. Uh, it was pitch dark, lashing raining, oh, and there was like a the hill I was on so I slid all the way down <laughs> with, with my trousers around my ankles <laughs> I was like this is the lowest point of my life <laughs> very funny and then you had to go back in and be like hey everybody do. <laughs> yeah I was like what just happened I yeah. Know, yeah yeah oh, it gosh, would be an interesting yeah. it would be an interesting uh, module in a, in a college though you know what I mean if BIM could bring that in how to how to get how to get used to changing in bushes or or yeah. how to deal with drunkards. 
And how to balance on one foot, yeah, in the bush, yeah. Right, how to balance on that's very important. <laughs> very important. I definitely think that is very important. Um, just for your confidence as well, because most of the time, like us singers, like we kind of just go out onto the stage and we just want to sing, like nothing mm. prepares you for the performance side. Mm. And like myself, I know I wasn't very, you know, hey, look at me, like blah, blah, blah. Like I was just wanted to sing and mm -hmm. it was more so for myself and if I could bring joy to people then that was fantastic but I wasn't one to be in your face and mm -hmm. to jump off the stage and go over to you and mm -hmm. it and all this kind of stuff so kind of um people kind of expect you to be like that but nobody teaches you how to do that and yeah it's very very difficult to mm -hmm. explain you know? No, I, I know what you mean. And also, I think that's why a lot of singers who would be in that position where they just want to sing and they, they, they love singing and maybe they've been performing in front of family and maybe in talent shows and things like that. But people see them um, and listen to them and think, oh, what a beautiful voice. And oh, you should do that for your for your profession or so. Or you should you should really follow that dream. And then people might find themselves in cover bands and realize that it's a whole different world. It's not it's actually. Yeah the singing is a thing that you 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 everyone the the people have to have yeah so yeah. you're not going to be in the band unless you're a good singer so that's already expected and then yeah. the other stuff around that is something that as you said you can't really learn from any book or from a college no. you have to do it on the fly in real time in front of people while yeah. wearing some crazy costumes maybe yeah and you have to like go through you know like bad experiences maybe embarrassing mm. experiences mm. you like could forget the lyrics or mm. forget a oh. song or you know what I mean like it's just it's all experience I have nightmares oh. I can remember very very clearly <laughs> having the iPad on the mic stand and feeling like an idiot every time I would I like think of oh no I don't know the word and then looking down and then it not being on the right song and then you know it's just like yeah oh it's a nightmare, nightmare. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> right. So, okay. So that's your cover uh, band and your college and your training. And then you were also talking about how now you're really getting into the, um, the anatomy of the vocal uh, or the, of, of the voice and also yeah. vocal health and stuff. But, um, so I guess the first question is this, what led you to study vocal health? Well, um, mm. yeah, it was probably, I'd say it was around three, three or four years ago, really, um, I was uh, teaching and um, basically I had the students, I, I'll uh, remain uh, anonymous there, but you know, confidentiality and all that. But she, um, she just came to me with a vocal problem. She had vocal cord dysphonia and asthma. Mm. So the two of them were like quite similar. I, I hadn't a clue by the way, what the hell they were um, and I just said to her first off you have a vocal problem um, I'm not a doctor mm. and so I don't feel comfortable teaching you because I don't know what you need and um, I could end up damaging you so um, I just said look can you stick with me and I'll try research it and I will guide you in the right direction but I'm not going to teach it and then she said, yeah. So I basically took down uh, like her vocal history, medical history, um, you know, like what symptoms she was having, uh, what was the difficulty when she was singing, um, all this kind of stuff, her social activities, her day-to-day -day life, diet, exercise, all of that stuff. It's just a questionnaire thing um, that I had gotten when I studied speech and language uh, therapy so she came to me during all of that by the way so um yeah so she came anyway and so yeah she was having trouble kind of breathing and anytime she exercised uh she just couldn't breathe at all so vocal cord dysphonia and asthma are two separate things but they're quite similar and mm. um, you know like it's a whole breathing thing they both have breathing difficulties but um like the VCD is like the vocal cords, they don't open correctly. So when you breathe in, they close. So with asthma, it's your your lungs basically that tighten up 
but with VCD, it's your vocal cords actually tighten up. So they often get misdiagnosed, um, you know, one or the other. And VCD so you could is have asked for dysphonia, is it? VCD uh, vocal, vocal cords dysphonia. dysphonia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. V VCD. Yeah. Mm. Um. Yeah. So that that's basically why she came to me. So I just kind of, you know, got really interested in it, and um, I said maybe you know often students or people they get misdiagnosed um with asthma and it could be vcd or the other way around mm. so with her we were kind of just trying different things it was just like i wouldn't usually do that um but it was up to her she kind of wanted to test different things so when she went to the gym just did a little slight thing where she used to use her inhaler all the time so I just said to her, would you like bring your inhaler, but try breathe through the straw instead, um, just to see if that helps. Cause I had researched it and it, there was a tip, maybe just breathing through a straw might help. So it was just a little thing that we tried and um, it really helped her and she ended up coming off the inhaler. Um, but I also advised her to go to her doctor and get a re-diagnosis cause it was when she was a kid, she got di diagnosed with that. Mm. Um, so she actually ended up coming off the inhaler altogether. Um, so it worked, you know, with that, but she's currently getting like tests and stuff like that as well. So, mm. um, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, don't diagnose your students unless they've been to a doctor. Right. Uh, or an ENT ear, nose and throat, throat specialist. Yeah. yeah. And as, I mean, that's so interesting because also as, as singing teachers and stuff, until you come face to face with the student having such a problem it's something yeah. that maybe a lot of teachers just wouldn't just wouldn't look up or wouldn't no. have the time or maybe even the interest to kind of go down that road even though it's so important and i think that's something yeah. we were talking about before as well in the sense of um you know uh, the fine line between a singing teacher um bring you know when you where you bring your child to every week you know just to just to get them half an hour out of the house and that's fine and stuff but then in your your position where you're working with professionals or you're working with students or adults that might have been diagnosed with a certain problem before and now they're coming to you and they have this this mechanism that does not work or this they have a dysfunction and then mm -hmm. it's this thing of what does the teacher do and i think in your position yeah reading up and researching is is obviously the first protocol but um then obviously sending them to the the ear throat and and ear throat and yeah. valve doctor right e uh, ear nose and throat ENT. Ear, nose, and throat. E so that's, that's ear, the number one thing you have to do yeah so you should not um teach your students under any circumstances if they have a problem like right. at all yeah so like no singing teacher i don't know maybe they maybe there are singing doctors out there i don't know mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, unless you're a doctor, do not diagnose your students like, you know, at all. Yeah, yeah. Send, Send them, them to their GP. And, yeah. Yeah. So the GP refers them to an ear, right. nose, and throat specialist. Yeah. Right. So, so they have to get a scope. Okay. Yeah. And the co yeah. the scope is called an alar um laryngoscopy. 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 So I've got. I actually have a little picture here. Oh, excellent. Because I, yeah. I also anyone watching at the moment can also go and look on YouTube. They have incredible videos of laryngoscopy um, oh, they're examinations. Amazing. They're incredible to watch how the vo and vocal cords work and also yeah. uh, really seeing different um, dysfunctions on the vocal cords themselves. But yeah, let's yeah. see your picture. Oh, is this backwards? Uh, no, that's great. Okay. So there are scopes I have written down. So you can get a two different types of um, laryngeal examination. So you can get a rigid one, which kind of goes right down the back of the throat. And um, there could be like a video attached to it that can record your, your um, the movement of your vocal cords mm -hmm. uh, or take photos. Um, and then, so it's rigid, sorry, you can see that. Yeah, higher quality image. Then, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, structural abnormalities and um, yeah, you that's a higher quality scope. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now this one, yeah. it's a flexible scope. Can you see the picture? I can. Yeah. 
up through the nose. So that one is a flexible scope that goes up the nose, down the back of the tongue, and just you wouldn't even feel it. It's so simple. Wow. Um. So, but that yeah, that views like your your whole throat, but um. Uh, that one doesn't take photographs or anything like that. But the the doc the ENT specialist can see directly down into your throat, um, and tell you whether you have nodules or polyps or any of that kind of stuff. Wow. Okay. Will. Yes, exactly. So I guess that brings us on to the next question, or one of the questions I also want to ask is the the different types of abnormalities that one can get uh, yes. as. And also, you know, when we're talking, I mean, I know it's let's talk singing, but it's also this kind of stuff is relevant to teachers and to oh, anyone, yeah. right? Speakers, um, yeah. anyone who uses their voice. But, but yeah, so maybe you want to tell us the different, um, the different types of abnormalities that can happen in the voice. I guess that would be cool. Yeah, um, like so, if you use your voice, anybody can, um, you know, get a, a voice abnormality uh, pathology. You know, so the ones that. Um, just singers in particular, um, from my own experience that I've come across a hell of a lot, it's quite common, um, are obviously vocal cord nodules. Mm. So <laughs> nodules. The horrible word that no <laughs> singer wants to hear. I know. Uh, so yeah, I just have my notes in front of me in case I, yeah. I forget anything. Sure. So yeah, basically they are um, hard, rough, non-cancerous growths on the vocal cords. Hard, rough, non-cancerous growths on the vocal cords. Okay. Vocal cords, yeah. So I think I might have a little, uh, yeah. So here, my my little picture. Nice, yeah. So that is what vocal mm. nodules look like. Mm. You see the little bumps? I do. Yeah. So if you had nice, healthy pink vocal cords, mm. they would be completely uh, clear with mm. no bumps on it at all. Mm. So when you sing, your vocal cords hit, uh, vibrate basically off each other to create the sound. Mm -hmm. And if you're pushing your voice, um, if you're really singing loud, projecting from the wrong place, you know, uh, throat singing or anything like that, mm -hmm. they can hit off each other too hard mm -hmm. and it causes the natural mucus that forms on it to disappear. Mm. and um, it has nothing to protect itself so it constantly bashes and bashes and it creates um, calluses basically it's like going to the gym or something you have calluses yeah. there yeah uh, or playing bass or something just overuse i also, um, also heard of this thing of someone using the analogy of like imagine you know with the with, when the vocal cords come together and they're they're touching off each other that they're also slapping together you know 220 times as under this absolutely. Is, and imagine doing this a thousand and two hundred times whatever it is without maybe any gloves on or without any special protection and the calluses yeah. that would arrive on your hands yeah 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 so it, it causes them uh, they are the most common okay um thing and if you if you're wondering like how do i know if i have them um you'll That's you'll awesome. feel like maybe a slight strain uh in your voice the pitch may not be clear um, it could be interrupted by little squeaks of air coming through the pockets. Mm. Um, so basically, with this, right, uh, when they close, usually uh, with a healthy vocal cord, they should be closed together firmly, mm. mm -hmm. which I do have um, another diagram here. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I hope nobody's squeamish. And <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so in a nice uh, relaxing state, uh, if you're not talking, this is what they look like. They're open. Um, and then when you start talking and um, this is what happens, they close. Right. So that's what a nice closed one looks like. Mm. Dead straight, like a pair of curtains, just bang, closed. So if you have nodules, they're not sitting properly. They're not closing properly. So as a result, if you have a little uh, bump in the way, it's going to cause air pockets right. to come through because they're not sitting properly. So you will find that when you're singing song, um, 
you might get a squeak of a note that's unplanned. It's very hard to control a note. Mm. Um, maybe part of your range is gone. Um, you might like have tension in the neck and um, maybe like a feeling of a lump in the throat and mm. um, that you constantly have to clear it and you could go hoarse as well. Um, so yeah, so you would have to go to your GP who refers you to an ear, nose and throat specialist. Mm. They'll get a scope up the nose, down the throat or straight into your mouth. Have a look and they'll see what's going on. And if you do have uh, nodules, basically, um, I just have a little um, thing here. Yeah, you'll yeah. go to a speech therapist because they will send you there. Mm. And you should go, like 100% go. Um, so they will educate you in, you know, like the, the laryngeal structure and function, uh, your anatomy of the throat, they'll educate you on that just to show you what it looks like. And as a singer, you really should know your instrument. Um, you know, like you should know what it looks like and how it works. Um, just like playing a guitar, I'm sure guitarists know absolutely everything uh, about the guitar, the strings, mm. the fretboards, the machine heads, absolutely everything. So you should know your, your anatomy of your voice as well. Mm. So, um, yeah, so getting back to the speech therapist, They'll educate you on the function of it, your yeah. voice. They'll examine your lifestyle. Uh, you know, like your what you do, your diet, your sleeping pattern, your water intake, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, as well. Um, yeah, so your different types of glottal attacks, the way you speak. Wow. So if I say I was at the shop, like ah instead of being like, I, I went to the shop, like a different type, a different way of saying um, saying it. And like it's not to avoid. Word. Yeah. Yeah, it's not the avoid, to avoid saying ah. It's just to give yourself a break while you have nodules and try and eliminate anything that could aggravate it. Uh, okay, I get what you mean. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm. So it's really specific um, the way you do everything. Mm. and they'll do they'll look into breathing exercises as well um your postural postural realignment um how to relax um and yeah your exercises exercises for improving your resonance so where you resonate the sound of your voice where you're speaking from and mm. um, and so it's not like down in your throat it's very uncomfortable <clears throat> you know so uh yeah just to put it in the the correct place yeah so it can have a chance to heal right you know so uh, that's that was nodules anyway and you um, know, just just before you go on so um yeah the the nodules thing uh as you said there like when the speech therapist goes and looks at your 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 water intake the way you speak your exercise routine your sleep habits things like that so really all yeah. of those things are are um can be contributors to to how you got nodules right so that's kind of yeah. absolutely know, yeah um yeah and especially like if a singer if they are getting vocal pain mm. in, in their you know just in their throat um or if it feels kind of stren strenuous in any way they will more than likely take painkillers mm -hmm. um, or anything that will try and, and take down the inflammation uh, that they're feeling, which is quite bad because it acts as like a blood thinner, you know, if it's like aspirin or something like that. Uh, just check that out, um, painkillers for singers. There's specific ones that you should take. Um, but it, you can thin the blood, which kind of will you know make things more you you more susceptible can't speak anymore <laughs> uh to like getting these type of vocal problems yeah yeah you know so there's a load of things that you can that will add up to to the process of getting nodules you know yeah. but um it's really good to keep a vocal hygiene diary oh nice well. Nick. So, cool yeah so um speech therapists might give you this as well so can you see that okay yeah yeah i think so yeah yeah so they will uh, ask you about your harmful behaviors right so there's a huge big list 
Um, there you go. Nice. I'm talking, mm -hmm. singing, talking too fast, talking loudly, you know, all of these things, talking emotionally. Wow, vigorous coughing, extreme laughing, smoking, eating, irritating food, spicy food. Wow, I mean, come on. Yeah. Excessive use. So there's a whole list of there. And then like morning, afternoon, evening, uh, just how often you, you do these things. Mm. Um, so it's really helpful because it makes you look at your own life and how you're doing things because you might just go, oh, sure. I don't know, I might just uh, have a headache, I'll just take this aspirin or yeah. I might just have a big curry or go out on the rip for two two nights in a row or yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I do. Yeah. Uh, so it really homes in on your routine and your lifestyle and encourages you to, to change it. Hmm. Which is great. So so also then you're saying not just um so this kind of lifestyle also is a, is a contributor and affects your the, the way in which your vocal cords function but um so when singers let's say just get a sore throat after maybe doing a big gig and they come yeah. home and then they say oh my throat is killing me yeah mm -hmm. um and i'll just rest um and still maybe live kind of excessively like maybe eating spicy foods or coughing or or not necessarily looking at what their routine is but just think that it's a it, the, the sore throat is just from the night before yeah and so it's really yeah, yeah. it's to, to like monitor that and um, so like if you I don't know have a heavy night or something and it usually takes the body to three full days to recover after like a late night out mm. drinking and sessioning mm. um, but if you're singing like late at night and stuff um, just like with a cover band or something like that uh, it would usually take two to three days as well for the voice to recover. Um, but maybe if the next day, if you're, you're, you seem to be okay and you're back to normal again, uh, that, that's quite good. But if it's not, um, you'd want to start looking at how you could change a few things. Right. Even the, down to the set list, like mm -hmm. the keys of your songs, change the keys. Do not push yourself. Um, don't put stress on your your instrument you know exactly yeah and yeah. a lot of a lot of singers that i teach as well are in bands and they come and they say uh <laughs> you know that they see the, the the key is too high and i can't really reach it and i kind of go look what you need yeah. to do is you need to go back to your musician friends and go we need to change the key and then they say oh but then you know they there might it might be hard for the guitarist or the you know whatever it is and then you kind of go yeah but they wouldn't have a gig if you weren't there and they're not exactly. going to have a gig if you can't sing, you know. Yes, exactly. And, and any yeah. musician worth his salt or her salt is going to understand that, you know. But also, it's yeah. important yeah. to educate musicians as well of, of, of vocal health and how, if they're working with the singer, that that also needs mm -hmm. to be a priority, right? That's a whole other bag. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like I I won't get into it, but I mm. was in a cover band where one of the band members didn't understand singers at tall and he favored filling the dance floor mm -hmm. over my vocal health and uh, because he wouldn't uh, either slow a song down he'd speed them up because they're all tracks so he'd speed them up to get the people on the dance floor right or uh, he would change the key mm -hmm. um, and then would there be no negotiation at all mm -hmm. uh, and wouldn't listen to what I had to say you know Right. Uh, so I left. I left that band because he didn't understand at all. Like right, so yeah. I, but it's which, also important for yeah for for um, singers that want to get into the game is also to to know that yeah. um, to not be afraid of pulling pulling people up on that. And as I said, any musician worth their salt will al al already understand. But still, in your position, you were in whatever band it was, and you were in the position that uh, the, yeah. the the band member didn't understand. So. Exactly, because like it's your, it, it, like it's such a, a complex instrument. Uh, it's very difficult to explain to non-singers, you know how it works, and it's a physical thing. You're human, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, and it like it's very very difficult to explain that. And um, mm. but it's for life. Mm. It's for life. Mm. So you really need to to listen to it. You know? Right. Yeah. And so, what's the difference between? Um, Tell me a, a nodule mm -hmm. and polyp. A little polyp. A little polyp. So, so they're only called little polyps, as so. well. 
a little polyp at all. <laughs> so po- polyps, um, yeah, they're like a, a blister like growth. Right. Yeah. Uh, they a bit different to, to nodules. Like, I mean, most of these kind of uh, vocal disorders are reversible. Mm. Um, so like that's important to keep that in your mind. Like don't freak out if you get a nodule or a polyp because chances are you can reverse them. Mm. Um, like surgery is the very last option. Um, you know, but try everything in your power to get rid of it before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but blister, yeah. So um, it's kind of, it kind of sounds the same uh, as a polyp. Not sorry, as a nodule. Mm-hmm. So the like it kind of sounds similar. Um, so like a polyp, you have absolutely no control uh, over the note. Mm. With with a, a nodule, you can kind of get away with it mm. um, by using different techniques, kind of compensating a different way. Mm. Um, but you still kind of have control over it. Whereas a polyp, it's bigger than a nodule, um, mm. and it's you've no control over it. Like it's the pitch will just squeak and girls go woo, like kind of a oh. yeah, no control, yeah. But you can shrink them and uh, they can eventually disappear and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, nodules, they can soften up. Steam. Steaming is like key. It's the best thing in the world. Uh, but we will talk about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that's basically um, what it is. I mean, you, you might feel, uh, it might sound harsh, raspy. Mm. Uh, you'll be, your vo- voice will be easily fatigued. Mm. um similar symptoms to not to nodules yeah so i guess that's also an important point in the sense of like people having a natural rasp in their voice yeah and being able to yes. sing the whole night away and and not necessarily be fatigued um yes. and it's, it's hard because some singers then compare themselves to those singers in a sense of oh why you can't know? i sound like that my voice gets tired afterwards oh yeah you know. Yeah, like I had a, a student um, and he came to me with, you know, twist and shout. Twist and shout, twist and shout. And uh, like that's insanely hard on the vocal cords. And he was like trying his best to sing this song identically to the to the, the original singer. Mm. And uh, he's like, I just like, it kills me, you know, and my voice yeah. is killing me. Yeah. And uh, I was like, why don't you just sing it like in your own voice? Yeah, How about that? that's also nice. <laughs> and uh, he, his mind was blown. <laughs> and I was like, just kind of sing it like this. And I, you know, did a few demonstrations. Right. And he, his voice was amazing. Right. And he nailed all- it. Like, yeah but i think it's this stigma against guy singers as well in the sense of like if you can't rasp when you're up there you're maybe not as i don't know there's a there's a thing with with especially in in rock bands obviously um and also pop bands and and some cover bands is that you know people are gonna go oh wow what a great oh he's such a great singer because he's doing this rasp and he sounds like he's given it all and then if you don't do that you're kind of the one that i don't know you're not as I don't know. There's some I know sort of what you mean. Again. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, that's not that natural rasp is something that I do want to look into as I don't mm. know much about a natural rasp. Mm. Um, but I would love to delve into that area. Yeah. Do you do you have you delved into the kind of how people can manipulate the rasp in the sense of? Uh, yeah, I haven't had yeah. a few. I haven't had uh, students that want to emulate that right. uh, sound thank god because i don't really know much about uh, like that but like yeah i mean yeah you could do it in a, in a safe way but i wouldn't recommend doing it for a whole song mm. it's good for effect but not mm. for an entire song like that for sure. but then yeah. on the opposite side you can get singers that are too hung up on technique mm. you know instead of just singing the song mm. like for every single line Mm. I, I had a student that she changed her technique for every single line mm. and she, her head was melted so mm. the the whole feeling and emotion of the song was gone right. and she was like technique 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 mm. so you know that you can spend too much time thinking about it yeah it's like anything you can you, you can go really far in but you also have to remember why you're going far in is because you want to sing yeah. at the end of the day um, yeah. So forgetting too much about just the natural singing is also not healthy and not good. 
Um, exactly. But yeah, it's interesting because this this thing about rasp singing and scream and stuff like that, um, like the episode two with Ben Wonders and stuff, we were talking a small bit about this and it was really, I, I, I wanted to talk to him specifically because he has this voice where it kind of just happens. Where Brilliant. He, yeah, it's incredible. It really is. And he, he doesn't necessarily know the technique behind it, but he knows when it's a good feeling or a bad feeling. He knows the difference. Great. Um, yeah. But I also started looking pretty deeply into it. Maybe last year, I had a st- I have a student, still have her um, here in Germany, and she came to me. She's thirteen years old, the coolest kid you'll ever meet. She's Aww. just so cool. <laughs> but she is um, she's totally into the Remo Screamo. Um, wow. Yeah, and she loves that music. Like she's totally that's literally all she listens to and wants to sound like and and. She brings me bands, names of bands and new songs every week. It's really incredible. Wow. But she also wants to learn how to scream. She wants to learn how to do this. And okay. I also have to be very careful in a sense because I can't, right? You know, mm-hmm. I can't do it yet. I know that there is a way. Yeah. I know that there's a healthy way. And I know that there's a technique yeah. to it. Even looking at CVT, Complete Vocal Technique and all of that side mm-hmm. where they really, yeah. you know, they have all of these different modes for the for the voice and stuff. But I did look up in the sense of, of my research came to a point where I understood the difference between, let's say, a vocal fry scream or a uh, a low growl scream or a, kind of that cookie monster scream or this kind of <laughs> real high pitched kind of squeaky scream and stuff. And so we were able, myself and my student, we were able to kind of begin the process of her doing it healthily, right? Yes. Not pushing her right into it, but understanding how to do let's say a vocal fry of allowing that uh, without too much air coming through literally not pushing at all just allowing that mm-hmm. flow of air in through your vocal folds and yeah. it's really that's all i'm giving her because i can't give her anymore but mm-hmm. she i think she deserves enough like my research brought me to the point that that's the kind of starting point that can be built upon but unless you have that starting point yeah. yeah yeah so and she's only 13 as well so she's still developing Completely. So it's yeah, with children, um, I haven't ta- I have taught children in schools and stuff like that, but just basic things, nothing mm. um, like that. So children's voices is another area that I would love to to study. Mm. There's too much knowledge. In I things. know it, it's a never ending, <laughs> never ending. That's what I'm hoping but, with this series, right? Is that it just continues because it is never ending. I love so that's just gonna be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but also like with you know like science science and theory like it is very important mm-hmm. uh, to be knowledgeable of but I think what is extremely important um, as a teacher to be able to recognize the person sitting in front of you the sound of their voice to be able to know uh, how to diagnose somebody if you know mm-hmm. what I mean I do be able to recognize a problem and uh, being able to recognize what they can and cannot do I think that is a skill mm. and that separates like amazing teachers from terrible teachers that don't really know what they're doing and like just be really careful with teach for students that are watching this and um, you can question your teacher ask their background ask where they've studied and you know their knowledge on things their experience and um, you know I know now I know a few people that are trying to get like a singer bar, a singing teaching bar uh, put into place where you have to pass certain exams to, to be a singing teacher mm. because there's so many phonies out there. I swear to God, it's mm-hmm. scary. Mm. Um, and anybody can teach, you know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but it's I guess this is, this is also the thing that we were talking about as well before is this kind of thing of hobbyists in a sense of like singers that just like to sing and have told been told that they're very good and they have a nice um just nice way about them and they they get by with just teaching singing but not really understanding the the ins and outs and as you said the importance of being able to notice and recognize when there is a problem and not pushing it pushing it yeah. pushing the person too far until it mm-hmm. becomes something that's irreversible absolutely yeah 100% yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. think, yeah, I mean, it's you're right. And I think what's cool is um, also Gemma um, uh, Sugru there, the last episode. Love her. Yeah. <laughs> She's amazing. She is yeah. amazing. And she, she also, 
is an amazing teacher and she is uh, so into that and she has this thing in 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 voice work studio where she what um, her school where she asks each of the each if each of the teachers to go through a certain training not I, I'm not sure if it's I don't know the details if it's before they yeah. can teach or whatever but I just know that there's a certain standard um, <clears throat> that uh, the voice work teachers yeah go by and I think that's so important for most for every school that has singing teachers oh, in yeah. it. Um, but mm -hmm. as you said like this this thing of anyone can be a singing teacher so there's no real regulations yeah, yeah. it's mad <laughs> it okay come here okay. let's let's yeah. pony on or I don't know what that saying is but let's do it anyway um, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> um, <laughs> let's look at ways to combat some dysfunctional um, vocal or so vocal problems yeah so ways to combat it how how does one when yeah. someone says okay i have some i have vocal nodules or i have polyp what do i do um well i mean if if they already have a polyp is it well yeah i guess we could do both avenues yes when they get a polyp i guess they've already been to the um ear nose and throat doctor and they've already gone maybe to see a speech therapist and they've they're giving some advice but maybe maybe what's better to ask is is there ways or are there ways for singers to um to maintain their voice to to combat maybe hoarseness or yeah i don't know what are your kind of tips for singers yeah. to kind of keep on top of their vo voice yeah. you know, or their vocal well we kind of uh, tipped on it already um mm. just a second ago when um I was saying basically as a teacher, you have to be able to recognize the problem in the student. Hmm. But what I'm saying now is that if you are the student or the singer, you have to be able to self-diagnose yourself. Hmm. So if there's something wrong with your voice, uh, you need to be able to know, you know, when to go to the doctor and um, whether you should stop singing altogether for a while um, or go see an ear, nose and throat specialist, but whatever it is, um, you just need to be able to recognize if your vo voice is in good health or not. Um, so yeah, if it is brilliant, keep going. Uh, you know, keep going with your warm ups, keep hydrated, get a good night's sleep. Uh, massage, I actually love massages on your throat. Mm. So laryngeal massage. Mm. So, um, I've been going to uh, a speech and language therapist in Trinity College. So he's the guy that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's been trying different things uh, on me as experiments. And uh, yeah, he was doing the, the laryngeal massage. So you can, you can do it to yourself, but don't do it to someone else because <laughs> you have to be qualified, okay? Wow, okay. So if you just get uh, your two fingers and you can just go around in circles, very, very gently and follow the muscle down, down here. So it's coming around like this. Mm. So just work your way down. Mm, in small circles. Yeah, in small circles. And it might it'll take a few minutes, but just keep going down and down. Mm. And you can also go in the back mm. as well. Do the same thing with your, your back muscles mm -hmm. in your neck mm -hmm. and just keep going down. Um, but there was, uh, there's also a thing called muscle tension dysphonia mm. uh, that I wanted to talk yeah. about as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I could find my little notes, yeah. So like muscle tension dysphonia was quite common um, as well, sorry. So if that's muscle tension dysphonia, it'd be like a lot of strain um, in your throat that can eventually lead to uh, vocal nodules and other problems so that's getting into the whole stress side of mm. things so stress can affect your voice um you know physically with muscle tension in your neck you can get problems with your stomach mm. good problems uh skin problems hoarseness breathing problems um but yeah it can also be psychological as well um, so if you've been through some sort of trauma, like a bereavement, um, stuff like that, uh, with you couldn't might not have any structural abnormality either in the throat, but it can affect you 
physically in your muscles. Mm. So this one here, it says that uh, Aronson from 1990 um, basically said that all patients with voice disorders uh, should be tested for excess. I can't pronounce this word. You can never pronounce this word. Um, musculoskeletal <laughs> tension. I can't pronounce Got it. Got it in one. That was perfect. Uh, <laughs> musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal nice. uh, tension. Yeah. Musculoskeletal. So either as musculoskeletal <laughs> um, tension. So either as a primary or secondary cause of dysphonia. Uh, so it really can um, affect you in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can't remember what the main point was now. No, but I know <laughs> what you're saying. But I think that's important. Yes, yeah, so we're kind of now moving a small bit on to this thing of how mental health and stress can affect then your yeah. vocal abilities. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the symptoms, even if... Right, okay, sorry. Mm. So if you get stressed out mm. and you become hoarse and things like that and you go to your ear, nose and throat specialist... Mm he may not even find anything wrong with your throat. There mightn't be anything visible there mm. at all, mm. but your the symptoms are, they're definitely real. Mm. Um, and they may be occurring because of emotional distress rather than it being related to an infection um, or disease or abnormality um, in the body, mm. you know, in the throat. So, I would suggest maybe going to some counseling, uh, a psychologist, um, talking it out, mm. you know, even talk to, to your yourself. I know it sounds mad and it feels a bit odd when you do it, but you can talk to your throat and just say like in your, your own time, just say, relax, throat, relax, relax. And eventually if you keep repeating that, yeah. it actually does work. Yeah. I, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be one to go to yoga or any of those things and um, because that's just not me. <laughs> I wouldn't have the patience for yoga, even though I know it's absolutely amazing for you if you can go. Um, but for me, I just like going for walks on the beach, anything to relax myself. Um, Counselling is great. Everybody should try that. And um, the laryngeal massage yeah is my favorite thing in yeah. the world yeah yeah and so um yeah i mean the thing is like i guess this this the, like when you go to the speech therapist or the ears note and throat doctor would they also yeah. are they also going to be asking you in a way obviously they're not there in a way like psychoanalysis or you know psychologists or whatever it is or um or yeah uh, or like that but they would they still be asking in some way um like looking at your stress or stress threshold or your stress kind of um yeah contributors and so so that would also be an option or an opportunity for you to so they're not just going to be looking at your throat but they also might look at um the symptoms that about. might be yeah that might be psychosomatic rather than yeah absolutely they they will yeah they'll do all of that and um, um just like your lifestyle and what's going on in your life mm -hmm. if there's anything really stressful mm -hmm. causing that and um, mm -hmm. if you have no abnormalities physical mm -hmm. abnormalities mm -hmm. on your throat on your vocal cords something else is causing it right and um, so they'll get to the bottom of it you know yeah and they'll, they'll mm -hmm. guide you in the right direction yeah i just i just know people that i know and i myself as well there's nothing worse than having some sort of an issue um that seems like it's physical and then going yeah. to see a specialist and them kind of going no you're fine can't see I anything know, yeah no you're fine yeah and then you go well, hold on a second i know this happens and yeah, yeah. so i guess what what is cool to say or what's important to say to singers as well is to if if you are one of those people who who are scared to be told that there's nothing wrong even though you feel it going to a speech therapist or an ear, nose and, and throat specialist, they will, yeah. they uh, they know that that can be and also a contributor, which is psychological rather than physical, which is very cool. Yeah, absolutely, you know. Yeah. Um, and there was also uh, a thing, I was a course during the week, I was watching a workshop. Um, can't remember the name of the actual school. Mm -hmm. voice, voice something was called. 
but um, it was really good. They were focusing on the vagus nerve or vagus nerve, uh, which is one of the largest nerves in your whole entire body. It goes from your head right down to your reproductive system. And um, it's very, very interesting. They talk about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So the I actually wrote a bit of it down. The sympathetic nervous system, yeah, is your like your fight or flight mode. Mm. So if you, I don't know, see a lion or a tiger and you're like, ah, mm. it sends your blood pressure up and your heart rate goes up and all that kind of thing. But parasympathetic is makes you calm down. So it brings your blood pressure down and all that kind of stuff as well. And um, so if you basically have a cold shower, it's uh, it kind of activates both nervous systems, both uh, different things, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. Okay. So by having a cold, cold therapy. So if you get co- have a cold shower, it reactivates the the nervous system into you know going shock mode kind of thing. And then afterwards, you're activating the parasympathetic nervous system, which makes you calm down. Mm. So this is really good for stress um, because it's activating both Mm. um, things in in the nervous system. So that's why they they kind of suggest having a cold shower at the end of your hot shower. Mm. um, Because it just makes your body alive and it it, um, does something to you. Right. make you calm down yeah check out the vagus nerve v-a-g-u-s it's it controls the movement of your vocal cords as well your eye movements your brain uh, your bowels your reproductive system it goes right through you so that could also be part of um a voice problem Hmm. the vagus nerve as well yeah interesting yeah it's it's really look into that it's great you know God, the editing on this video is going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be love great. It. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, right. I just want to look at the questions just so that we're not going too far. Okay, so, yeah. Cool. I think we talked about, yeah, so, okay. So, actually, a lot of them you've already answered. So, I mean, stigma against singers having vocal damage. Yeah. And this is a huge problem. Um, I have worked with a lot of students that have developed nodules and polyps and VCD, as I was saying, um, vocal hemorrhages as well. I haven't touched on that. Um, a vocal hemorrhage is really common, really common. So it's where a blood vessel can burst on the vocal cord. Sorry. That's, that's <laughs> okay. yeah, no, I know I'm not. I just know. I know. Um, I know a person that had that and I know how horrible it is. I haven't had it myself, yes. thank God, but yeah. So thank God. But uh, yeah, so it's like a little bleed on the vocal cord and, and it's within the vocal cord as well. It doesn't actually bleed out like a cut. Okay. Um, so it's under a thin layer in the vocal cord itself. Um, so it goes quite red and it can harden um, if it's not treated or whatever. It, it goes away itself, mm. but sometimes it can lead on to other problems you know um but where was i going with that with this maybe i can uh, i'll just butt in just for a sec the symptoms like yeah. so we had the symptoms of like that nodule symptom or how you can maybe feel that you have it is this thing of like the wavering of the of the 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 pitch of the note and you yeah. can still you can kind of maneuver it so that it works but it's not so healthy and then you have the polyp where you it's much more difficult to maneuver it to work because it's a uh, the more surface area, I guess, um, the polyp as a blister on your vocal cord, and then yeah. the um, uh, the hemorrhage. Then how how is one to know that that's what's happening? What's sometimes you don't know. Um, like you could get it from even a co- like coughing too hard. Yeah. Like a big <clears throat> like a big cough, um, can pop, um, the vocal cord make just have a little bleed on it. Sneezing too hard, shouting too hard singing too hard and mm. um, anything can can cause this vocal hemorrhage mm. and it's it's really common and people a lot of the time wouldn't even know they have it yeah um, but sometimes in a more serious case um, you will notice like hoarseness and um, a bit of a swelling on the vocal cord um a bit of pain maybe um yeah that kind of thing 
I mean, it's funny because all the symptoms are actually quite similar hmm. to nodules, polyps, the vocal hemorrhage. Um, they're they're kind of similar symptoms, hoarse, hoarseness, uh, maybe some throat pain, um, difficult in pitch, um, vocal fatigue, this kind of thing, you know? Yeah, I do. And I think that's also the big, not the big problem, but also I, I guess there's not many things that you there's not many other symptoms that your voice can have right hoarseness swell mm -hmm. swelling as you mentioned just there so i guess it's it's knowing yeah. that if you do have these symptoms and that they are and they are um constant maybe or reoccurring yeah. all the time then you kind of need to yeah just head over and go to the gp and just have a look yeah check it like out like if the hoarseness is consistent like mm. if it's not going away yeah um absolutely go somewhere uh, also, a common thing is feeling like a lump in your throat right. that yeah. you know, it <clears throat> constantly clear uh, your throat could be an indication to maybe having one of those things. Or it also could be like a muscle thing, like muscle tension, because your throat is mainly made up of muscles, yeah. um, intrinsic and extrinsic muscles. So like you need to, you, basically it's kind of like elim you're eliminating different things until you mm -hmm. find out what it is or else you could just go straight to your ENT specialist. Yeah, but I guess that's, yeah, but I think that's an interesting point as well, kind of eliminating the things that it could be in a sense of, okay, check yeah. yourself, like just kind of, and I think that's why I know, I know a lot of teachers and I, I do it myself and I'm sure you do is like this vocal warm up. Uh, before you get anywhere near the sirens or anywhere near your vocal warm ups, you need to do yeah. your stretching. Yeah, so it's so important. Absolutely. And yeah. a lot of my students, when I used to start with them, um, a lot of new people would come to me and kind of go, God, it feels like, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm going and doing yoga. I was like, yeah, great, yes. excellent, fantastic. Because <laughs> if we don't do that, there is a huge possibility that uh, uh, that something not so nice might happen. And, yeah. you know, and it's weird then because you're, you're, you're the teacher, which means that you're the kind of one responsible for this person. Um, Absolutely, room, yeah. You know? Like, I mean, your because your vocal cords, um, I had a little thing there. Yeah. They are basically like suspended by muscle mm. um, and cartilage. So you've got like one bone going across there. It's the hyoid, bo hyoid bone mm. or elsewhere is that thing. Yeah. I, it's, it's very hard to remember the technical, I medical know, sure. terms. I know all those Latin words. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like basically the framework um, of your larynx it's basically composed by like two different types of cartilages. So the upper thyroid cartilage, uh, which kind of is also known as the Adam's apple. So it's quite pointy. It comes out like a V shape mm. and sits like this. Mm. So in a man's one, um, the pointy bit is your Adam's apple. That's that's the um, this guy here. The thi upper thyroid cartilage. Mm. Um, and then the lower and smaller is called a uh, cricoid uh, cartilage. So this structure, it basically just protects your larynx on the inside. It's like just cradling it, you know? And uh, so that's the hard thing that you're feeling there, it's cartilage. Mm. So yeah, behind that is your, your larynx and they're just suspending there mm. by muscle. So it's very important to make sure that everything is always nice and relaxed mm. around your throat, which is very hard because most people are like totally stressed out, including myself. Absolutely. Everybody goes through everything, you know, totally. stressful, you know. Yeah. Um, so it is quite difficult to be totally zen all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, but I think it's also then so important for teachers to take that time at the start, like 10 minutes. I usually do minimum 10 minutes of just fitting, like allowing this to just become loose. And I just say them like buzzwords, loose and I mean, it's all in German. I'm trying to think of what I actually say now. Um, but I can't What's think of it all. German? Uh, locker. 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 <laughs> locker. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 yeah, so it's just exactly. And doing a lot of this, like I watched um, the guys from the Naked Vocalist and the podcast and they do all uh, YouTube stuff as well. And exactly, they were doing that pharyngeal um, massage, right? And they were doing this one and bringing it down so you're really again this big muscle here and it's all yeah, yeah. as you said it's all it's so important under here as well under your your chin we, yeah we do this great one putting our hands together two thumbs and we get the root yeah. of the tongue amazing that that is like that's deadly I love it's that one. amazing i love that one yeah. it's also it's also kind of uncomfortable but really satisfying as well 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of people kind of say I've never touched that part of my face. I know it's funny. <laughs> On my head. Yeah. But it's like yeah, all your shoulders, your yeah. chest, your back, your head, everything is it's connect. Like your head is heavy. Like do you yeah. know? Yeah. So. so yeah. Everywhere around needs to be nice and relaxed. So, yeah. yeah. And so you were saying, okay, so I guess then we can, um, we can kind of go towards the. The, the thing that I want to also talk to you about and I think we taught you touching it for two seconds I think which was about the steaming oh, yeah? yeah and how important yes. steaming is right absolutely um I absolutely love steaming um what is I, steaming I, tell us what it is I, let me do you, do you have, have your it? steamer yeah. handy there now my steamer is actually in the back room I don't uh since uh, in Dublin, I haven't my... really used it well, basically, okay, so yeah. I can, can I just run and grab it? Just Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. just give me a sec, because no I would like to show it, if I have it, yeah. You got okay. it? Okay, I do, nice. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. Is this a new one, or is this your old one? Uh, no, this is just the one I have, I just yeah. uh, had it in my wardrobe. Hmm. Um, so basically, it's, like a facial sauna, the one I use. Uh, it is a facial sauna. <laughs> so basically, the box. Uh, this is a funny story about this box. Actually, it's completely torn to shreds because mm. I used to sing with uh, Codeline, right? And I used to. Uh, I was a backing singer for Codeline. So I also used to teach the the lead singer. And I told him, I was like, look, steam, it's the best thing in the world. And he was like, what the hell is steam? And right, so I bought him one and we were gigging in Malahe Castle and he was tearing open the box, didn't know how to open the box or anything, it was hilarious. And then afterwards he ended up leaving the steamer there. <laughs> uh, so I got a taxi, I had to get the steamer, tell the taxi man to put the steamer in the taxi the next day and drive it to my house <laughs> because I was like oh, I paid for the steamer yeah, and I'm like, I know. I'm gonna leave it there <laughs> I remember I remember it very well oh god yeah. but anyway so the steamer if you can you can put your head in a bowl of hot water if you that also works yeah can't afford a steamer um just be careful of the boiling water cool. so you put your a towel over your head and just inhale the steam you could have a really hot shower and inhale the steam as well or you could go to argos and buy a facial sauna for 22 euro <laughs> uh, so basically you put the water in there it's only like a, a really small amount that like that much water um you pop this thing on top and then you press the button and steam will come out it takes a few minutes for the steam to come out and you just put your head in like that and you can breathe through the steam and it only takes a few minutes mm. but just remember to turn it off as well and what we see, uh, it, it, yeah <laughs> it looks it's funny now looking at your one my one is i don't know my one is maybe a bit a smaller and a bit but your one looks kind of like a blender right that you're putting your head into it a blender, like a blender. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh jesus yeah it does but as in i guess we should yeah we should say that they're completely safe and as long oh, yeah. as you uh, don't I'm not sure. So what? Uh, maybe we can talk about the the benefits of steaming first. Of yeah. So the benefits of steaming is that it directly hits your vocal cords um, in a safe way. It doesn't will never burn your vocal cords or anything like that. By the time the steam gets down there, it cools down anyway. So um, it basically just hydrates your your vocal cords. And I, I'm not too sure if people uh, might know, but your swallow where you swallow food and drink is separate to your breathing apparatus so your vocal cords are on top of the breathing apparatus so liquids and food never touch your vocal cords ever yeah they have the two different tubes and you've a, like a switch called the epiglottis mm. so it can close over your swallow mm. basically and if this is your breathing one it's like a lid that goes on that so you can swallow food and water down this one and then if you're breathing the epiglottis switches to your food 
and stuff so you can breathe so you don't choke yeah um, so yeah. yeah, and the point is really that kind of when singers think of water, 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 it takes about six or seven hours for water to reach your vocal yeah. cords because there's so much in your body that needs to be hydrated. So exactly, yeah. but like I mean, always keep hydrated anyway. Absolutely, um, but this kind of thing, yeah, is steaming, it takes ages. yeah, as you said, the steaming kind of gets directly to them, um, and yeah, um, it hydrates them yeah. that way, but it like in a lot lesser time. Mm, um, and yeah. but also i have this contraption i don't know if you oh have... yeah i've seen this yeah. one yeah so i basically uh saw this online mm -hmm. grab the box there sorry um i saw this being advertised online for classical singers mm -hmm. um, and it's called vocal mist yeah i've heard of it yeah Excellent. yeah it's really cool uh the difference between this and the facial uh, sauna thing is that that's hot steam and this is cold so this is my mission now to figure out which one is better for your vocal cords so look if i just press the button it comes out straight away wow. sorry it comes out straight away that you can't really see that yeah i can yeah that's great cheekest and it's cold steam it's cold yeah so it's just water that I, I put in there, just put a bit of water in. Mm. And then I need to look into the mechanics of this, um, but it obviously hits some sort of mesh thing there. I don't know what happens, um, but it produces cold steam. Amazing. And if you put a tissue in front of it, it does, it wets the tissue. So you can see that it is actually hydrating. Mm. Um, but I, I just I got it just for research purposes, just to see which one was better. Um, so it's really nice. It gives you a nice little uh, pouch and stuff to put in. That's nice. Um, but I also got so yeah. But steaming is one thing that I would yeah. do mm -hmm. on a regular basis every day. Mm. Um, and then I got these singing straws. I haven't tried them yet. Oh. I haven't tried them yet. Um, but the singing straw is like mm. it's a little yeah um thing and then you get a cleaner as well mm -hmm. pop in. they're really good but I, I presume it's just like i need to look into it now myself but it's for like you know like breath pressure and um yeah distance and uh all that kind of stuff mm. you can hum into it yeah. uh so there's that one and i also have, I have loads of little contraptions this is also for um breath resistance okay so it changes to different measures so this that was the easiest and then it goes right down to the hardest okay put this bit in your mouth okay so i'm basically just breathing right but but it's creating that back pressure up, yeah yeah as i put them up closer it gets harder sure uh, yeah. and longer so you spend ages trying to breathe in the air Wow. And then I oh, just ah, okay, so you have to breathe in through your mouth through that first and then out through that as well. It's not in through your nose and out through that, no? No, you breathe in through ah, your mouth okay. and out through your mouth as well. Jeez. Yeah. That's like a really, really cool. in, yeah, really intense breathing exercise of like trying to control the slow breath in to really fill. Like that's excellent. You're feeling the resistance yeah. in and out. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. So that you're not taking that quick breath up here yeah. you know that uh and can i also clear up that um yeah. people always say breathe into your diaphragm yeah a lot of teachers say that but it absolutely makes no sense because <laughs> your diaphragm is not alone yeah uh, you can't your, see your diaphragm you're not your even diaphragm you do this. Is just a muscle yeah uh you know it's just a, a muscle that connects everything together holds mm. it all together mm. Um, but it's you can't breathe into your diaphragm. It's mm. it's not alone. Mm. You can say um, like the diaphragmatic system. You can say that. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's yeah. it's interesting because I guess these this is what's really cool about voice teaching and voice uh, science and and the kind of connection now between scientists and voice teachers and them coming together and now kind of crossing uh crossing information you know of this thing of like yeah. teachers now being aware like that was just a, a thing that teachers threw around for hundreds of years yeah. because that's kind of 
that's what they understood. But now we're, yeah. we're starting to realize that we can't even see the diaphragm. The diaphragm is behind <laughs> the muscles here and it just goes up and widens, right? And yeah. But yeah. it's, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting kind of thing to try and get rid of old terminology, right? Absolutely, yeah. I hear it time and time and time again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not technically correct. I wouldn't uh, right. be saying that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so last thing, yeah. Nick, right? Yeah. Unless you have something, unless you have something there that you want to say, absolutely work away. Please be my guest. Uh, just, I, I like using Tiger Balm. It's a really, really small one. But, what is uh, it? It's Tiger Balm. <laughs> Picture of a little tiger on it. <laughs> that make, that means nothing to me. What is it? <laughs> tiger Balm is like, it's just um, like a eucalyptus type muscle relaxant. Ah, um, yeah, cool. You can, you can buy it in any health food shop tiger bam just like a tiger nice. and um it's it's really it's great it's like deep heat but a um an easier kind of version of it wow and if i'm feeling tense or anything i just put some on my neck and it's really good it that's works cool. but um, yeah, yeah. Nice. i've never heard of that i've never used that before ever that's really cool tiger yeah. Bam, yeah. Right. yeah so you just place it in are you you um yeah. you put it you on can put it anywhere just not your eyeballs <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> Relax like, in your eyeballs, like yeah, because it, it it would burn like it's a bit burny. Yeah, well, eucalyptusy, yeah. yeah, for sure, yeah. But that's great. It's that's yeah. yeah. So you have those steaming things, um, which yeah. I guess is really important. And I know I know a lot of like you know constant working singers, like let's say musical theater heads. My brother is a big um, advocate for steaming, and so um, yeah. because it really is so important, and a lot of people actually a lot of people a lot of singers just don't know about it right a lot of people just don't yeah. necessarily have been they haven't been told about it they've yeah you know, I, um, I really think it does help so much I you know it really do. does yeah yeah this one's from uh california i think that mm, i saw it yeah. Mist, yeah yeah it's about a hundred dollars yeah um yeah so it's got all these all these things that i'm showing you are all like quite little de details that will keep your voice healthy yeah. you know so the steamer i've got my breath uh resistance thing mm -hmm. my seeing straws which i will uh get into that let me know how you um, feel and how those go because i use the straw technique well. myself um and the sovt all that kind of stuff but i want to get those they're kind of yeah. you know really made for singers um yeah um so let Absolutely. me know how they go yeah. Gar gargling as well as amazing i love gargling <clears throat> like water yeah and um, or like um yeah if you put the bubble your straw in water mm -hmm. and you can blow bubbles i yeah. love that one it's very very effective yeah and um, it's like a massage on your vocal cords absolutely um, and yeah. also what i think is very important mm. is um earphone ear monitors nice. if you're keeping yeah. on the stage and mm. um, so it's you know if you're gigging with a band and stuff mm. a monitor just sometimes doesn't cut, cut it and you can't hear yourself and you're trying to compensate by singing louder so in-ear monitors definitely a, a plus there you know yeah i think that, that's all my gadgets i have yeah. anyway <laughs> i love that all your gadgets yeah. love it. it's excellent yeah. And <laughs> the whole thing about the straw as well, like all of these are really good for vocal rehabilitation as well, right? They're all, Definitely. what's cool yeah. is it's all coming from that world. And now we're really, as singers, getting to be a part of that world because it is so important. Um, yeah. And I think it's kind of um, developing more and more. There's like a whole movement yeah. happening now. Yeah. Um, where it's, I'm loving it. So. Yeah. It's hard to keep up with it, but I'm loving it too. Yeah. 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 It is hard to keep up. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so last question then, Nick. Yeah. Go to warm up. What are they? Or what is it? One, two, yes. whatever it is. Your go to one. Well, um, basically, for if I'm warming up for a performance, um, I do have all of this routine that I do first before I even start singing. Right. So I would have like the massage thing. Um, I might do the tiger band the night before so that I'm totally relaxed for the next day. Um, I like to have the lemon and honey uh, Manuka tea with mm -hmm. slices of lemon, just mm -hmm. because it's nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I do stretches, get a good night's sleep. 
a um, lot of water, relax, and just get into the performance. Like I need to be confident in what I'm singing mm. um, to be able to be really let myself go and be totally relaxed. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and Ronan Guilfoyle uh, said to me before, he just goes, always know. Mm. Just two words, always know. Oh, and goodness. I just thought that was like, that stuck with me. Mm. Um, because it's all right. If mm-hmm. you're not confident in what you're singing, everything else is going to suffer. Absolutely. Everything else. Like yeah. you're, throw everything. Mm. Um, so after all of that, I, um, I do stretches and then I do breathing exercises. Mm-hmm. So just the usual in through the nose and out. All of those kind of ones. Um, I would then go to an NG sound. That's my favorite and mm. into an off. Mm. Mm. Ah. Nice. Simple like that. Yeah. Um, and just go up chromatically or whatever you like. Um, yeah. I like to do tongue exercises. Even if I'm not seeing it's just like a mm-hmm. that kind of thing, mm-hmm. or just mm-hmm. I like doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, my lips as well, mm-hmm. not too hard, just nice ones. And then I like to do exercises that go from the root note to the fifth. So instead of doing like a full octave range of exercises and tiring myself out. I like to do short exercises, but effective, mm. um, and slowly work my way up mm-hmm. um, the scale. Um, so yeah, you could just go uh, like no, 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 yeah, and then go nice. up and up and up. So uh, I like that one. Uh, I also like the downwards arpeggio on you. I think you might know that one. Mm. You. so good yeah it's so just good. really nice like yeah. in your neck and everything. yeah uh, and then i gradually go like i i gradually intensify the uh, exercises um so i do loads of hums and all that as well but to the word no yeah uh what is it again <laughs> off the top of my head <laughs> No 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 but I would spend a lot of time warming up before any performance teaching, even if I'm just not doing anything at all that day, yeah. I do it anyway. And come here, what's the point in warming up? Why would, why do we need to warm up? Because uh, it would, it would like just warm up your, your muscles uh, in your throat. Um, and it also gets you used to singing basically. Mm-hmm. So if you haven't sang for the entire day, yeah, you can't just launch into like I want to break free or something yeah. like that or uh, <laughs> La Vie en Rose or something like that you know and um, yeah. yeah it's just good to warm yourself up yeah mm. yeah and so this yeah. is the, yeah right so then the, the the point of warming up basically is just to make sure that you are then have all of the opportunities to be able to sing the way you want to sing yeah like if you think so, about it um, an athlete like if they're going to run they do stretches, they warm up their muscles. It's the same thing for your voice. Mm. As I was saying, it's suspended by muscle. Mm. So by you doing all these exercises, it's working the whole mm. uh, structure of it. Mm. Yeah, you need to warm yourself up. And it's also probably eliminates the, the, the chances of you getting nodules or polyps or mm-hmm. vocal hemorrhage. 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 Oh my god, hemorrhaging. <laughs> <laughs> a vocal hemorrhage. Yeah, I okay, know, that's the one. Um, yeah, right, hemorrhaging. Uh, right, so it's it's just eliminating the, 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 the chance of that happening. Not that it would say yeah. that you're never going to get it if you warm up all the time, but it's really eliminating it, right? Keeping well, yeah, it's getting rid of that tension right. in your throat. Exactly. Yeah, which contributes then to yeah. yeah bad singing technique. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. But also, if you... Um, get nodules and polyps and stuff don't think it's because you have bad vocal technique 
it could be as i said he could like i don't know just have a sneeze and get a vocal mm -hmm. hemorrhage or it, it's not because you've bad vocal technique mm -hmm. it could be just overuse right you know yeah, yeah. It, as you said so, it could so be just sorry but it could be just kind of daily routine things that maybe you need to look at um that yeah are, yeah affecting yeah so like any singers out there and like don't beat yourself up about it yeah. uh it's not because you've bad technique it it could be just overuse or misuse kind of thing you know yeah exactly um, yeah. yeah 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 excellent oh yeah great nick <laughs> yeah I have no more questions. I'm no. I I have loads more questions, but actually, I'm just looking at the time now. <laughs> what time? How long have we been doing this? I have no. no I, do, I don't know. It's now twenty past eight here. Twenty past seven there. Oh, okay. so, when, when did we start? <laughs> I have a feeling it was like half past five. Anyway, I enjoyed oh, it. God, that was amazing. I loved, I loved it I so loved much. It. Yeah. Informative. Totally. For I know for me it's informative, which means I know that people watching um, will definitely st also find this informative. You know, um, cool. especially coming from I think it's so important coming from a performer, then finding your your way into this vocal health and vocal science and and speech therapy and stuff like that. I think it's also important for singers to kind of that's also something that they can trust about you as a as a um, as a helper, right, or as a specialist is that you have come yeah. from being a singer too looking at the the kind of ins and outs and stuff of it you know exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Excellent. cool thank you so much you, no it was problem. great i thought we yeah, were going to have you. loads more like not being able to speak and just giggling but actually it, really, it actually really went really nicely it was so good so good to it hear you talk passionately ahead. about your stuff you know oh, it's great thanks, <laughs> so cool. yeah. but yeah there were moments yeah yeah go on <laughs> The, yeah there were moments where i was like trying not to laugh i know yeah. <laughs> it's hard to concentrate and actually you know get the words out the terminology sure. you're like i know this but i'm actually gonna forget it i know so yeah I know. thank god i had notes <laughs> yeah um, that was fantastic as well that's so good um but yeah look good. Come here, let, let us leave it there um and i'm going to i mean as i said the edit is going to be really fun for me to do um this is what's so good about this <laughs> let's talk singing series is that I get to do it and then I go and get to edit it, which means I'm like, like getting double learning. So I'm here speaking to you learning and then <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna spend the next couple of days editing. So I'm gonna be Brilliant. learning again, you know, it's so good. Um, so thank you so much. And maybe we'll do a, um, a, another one, yeah? And maybe a couple of weeks or another couple yeah. of months and you can tell us how the singing straw thing is going for you. Right? I'd love that, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Yay, and stay you. safe. Yeah, Rainbow. you too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, thanks, Nick. All right, I'm gonna, um, yeah. I'll just turn off the recording here, but then we can have a bit of a chat after, yeah? Good, yeah. Okay, Ready. bye.